Brain oriented. Uh, I'm a Price Waterhouse CPA, Stanford MBA, and Chief Financial Officer. But I reinvented <laughs> my life mid mid career as a gerontologist. I have a graduate degree in gerontology from USC, and in my business, Encore Management, I specialize on el elder care advisory services, Medicare advisory services, which are very topical right now uh, during the annual election period, and then aging advisory <laughs> services. But regardless of what I might have done in my professional life, my greatest accomplishment was the role that I played to my mother during the last 10 years of her life. Yes, she too had dementia, but as I characterized her, she was charmingly confused. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna talk today, this is a caregiver conference, uh, and my goal is at the end of this is to hopefully change your perspective on your role as caregiver. But I want to start with acknowledging that this is probably the most difficult role that you will assume in your entire life. And if you haven't figured that out yet, I'm here to tell you it is going to be the most difficult role that you will assume. But it is also a role that has the greatest potential for joy. And that's what I'm going to talk about today, creating moments of joy. I'm gonna start with you as caregiver, then talk about your family, then talk about your loved ones, and then we're gonna get into some moments of joy stories all about people who would lack legal capacity, but definitely still have the ability to find happiness in life. So first of all, caregiver stress really is real. So this might be a picture of you on, and 60% are caregivers are women, 40% men, but I think the pictures of women really describe how you're feeling. So that's when you kind of have it together on the outside, but really on the inside you feel more like this picture. And on the weekend, this is actually probably exactly how you feel. But the best prescription I can give you for caregiver stress, because we know what happens, it will be declining health to you, the caregiver, is creating moments of joy. But first, you have to take care of yourself first. So that analogy in an airplane, put the oxygen mask on you first, you have to take care of yourself first. And I'd also like to add an additional airplane analogy, which is the one of if this is a, if the plane goes into a spin, which is often how you feel, you are in a spin that you have difficulty getting out of, the only person that can get you out of that spin is the pilot, and you are the pilot. So you need to take care of yourself first. And so I'm here to remind you to remember, don't forget yourself. So often caregivers know these things theoretically, but they can't give their self permission to do some of the things that they know they really should do for themselves first. Great example, um, Slate Magazine, Dear Prudence, the Dear Abby of today, there was um, uh, written in by a, a woman who cares for her elderly parents and also for her husband who's ill. And she said all she wanted to do was go to a hotel. She wanted to read books by day and binge TV watch on Netflix by night. And her husband was making her feel guilty about it. And so both Prudence and I would say, you don't need to ask permission for something to do. If that's what you need to do, that is what you should do. So I'm here to remind you, don't forget yourself. So how do you do this? You have to ask for help. Frequently, caregivers don't ask for help. Um, as we talked about, caregiving, the primary support structure is the family. The family is the first avenue of help, but one of the, unt the untapped resources for, for a loved one is friends. So if you are caring for a loved one and you don't know the names and addresses of their circle of friends, you need to do that. So that's an untapped resource. If you have financial ability, even getting someone in for a short time during the week to help with some of the physical, the um, uh, activities in a home can be helpful to you to give you respite. And one of the greatest underutilized uh, resources in this arena uh, is geriatric care managers. 
So you need to ask for help, and then you, need to, you might need to set boundaries. So for instance, um, one friend of mine, Nancy, she's an attorney. It was very difficult for her seeing her mother every day. It was negatively impacting her business. So what she did was she now goes to see her mother on Tuesday evenings and all day Saturday. And she sets aside that time, and it has really helped her role as a caregiver. So you might actually have to set some boundaries. But again, you're the pilot. You need to set those boundaries. And what brings you joy? Maybe it's having exercising with your girlfriends. Maybe it's drinking with your female friends. Maybe it's going away for the weekend. For the guys, maybe it's playing golf, um, playing sports. Whatever brings you joy, you need to bring that to your life. And it's not just joy, because it also could be peace. What brings you peace? Actually, again, for Nancy, when I asked her just recently, what's been the greatest help to her in caring for her mother? And her response was going to church. So at age 63, she went and uh, got her first communion and got confirmed. That brings her the ability to have the patience to deal with her, with her mother, who's a very difficult woman. For some people, going to a caregiver support network is a very helpful. But for other people, that's the last thing they want to do. They need to get a break from that role. So whatever brings you joy and peace is what you need to do for yourself. So now I want to talk a little about family. Family is the primary support structure, structure for aging. So this is a family that I grew up with. It's Ozzie and Harriet. And maybe this is today's family, Ozzy Osborne. <laughs> so I don't know. It doesn't even look as functional as it used to be. So the reality is families, most families are dysfunctional. Um, I applaud those who have a functional family. Most families are dysfunctional. Family ties are less strong. Um, our parents did a really good job with boomers in teaching us to be independent. Uh, also, the fact that we don't live near each other, there's no longer a nuclear family. Not that that is necessarily dysfunctional, but it doesn't work as functionally. The other point is that priorities are competing. So when my mother performed her role as caregiver, she was a non-working housewife. That non-working housewife doesn't exist anymore. Most caregivers are working. There might be long distance caregiving. And now that there could also be a sandwich generation. So there's very competing priorities uh, for today's caregiver and today's families. And respect for elders has declined, particularly in the United States. This is not a culture. And above all, become a facilitator of experiences. The choice really is yours. So may your life be filled with no regrets. May you see the extraordinary in the ordinary. And may someone be there to brighten your world as you age. Thank you.